everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Gabrielle, and I'm joined with my colleague Lauren, also from the EALA team. And so we're here, like I said, from the Educating All Learners Alliance. Um, ELA is an alliance of over 90 partner organizations, and all the work that we do seeks to promote best practices for students with disabilities. So we provide services, especially for teachers, um, in the way of a resource library and a tech tool library that we host on our website, in addition to some events like this, where we share bright spots from the field and things that educators might need to know. Um, so we're starting this new monthly series, which today is the first month, where we will be going over the top resources from the previous month, in this case, July 2021, and also giving recommendations of the best resources uh, related to a specific theme for that upcoming month. Since August is now ahead of us, we'll be theming it uh, back to school. So we're gonna share some of those with you. And at the end, we'll also be um, sharing some of our future month themes. Now, I don't wanna take too long, but before we get started, specific to this month, we uh, have partnered with ISTE um, on this course that they've created. It's called ISTE U Summer Academy. And essentially what it is, it's a self-paced course where um, you have different modules that educators can take to prepare for back to school. Um, there's a, a long list of different types of um, trainings that it has for you, but it's different topics such as um, working collaboratively with other teachers, social emotional learning, all different aspects. And again, self-paced course. And so we are happy to partner with ISTE and we're providing free scholarships that you could use or share with others to participate in this course. Um, and it's starting in August, which is why it's so timely. So if you go to ISTE's website and you look up ISTE U Summer Academy, you can use the code S-L-A-E-A-L-A, -A -A, no spaces and all caps. And you use that code to get the free scholarships. Uh, so like I mentioned, we have a lot of resources for you today. So I'm going to drop in the link, uh, the file of a PDF where you can access all the resources that we mentioned today. Uh, and I'll also pass it over to my colleague, Lauren, to get us started. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. So first I want to say, I'm so sorry about my, my voice. I have a summer cold, it's just the worst. Um, so sorry, I'm a little congested. Um, and also thank you so much for coming. And for those of you watching in the recording, thank you for watching. Um, like Gabrielle said, we are going to go through the, the top um, and most recently released resources on the Educating All Learners Alliance website. Um, and they're really varied. So we tried to talk, we tried to include um, resources in, in different formats. Um, you'll see podcast videos, um, just kind of like straight web page resources, things like that. And also the topics are really varied. So where one might be directly applicable to your work, the others or or maybe one or two more might not be as applicable to your work. And so in that in that way, we do encourage you to share around. You know, if something maybe doesn't does it resonate as much with you, but you think it might with a colleague. Um, these are all resources that are coming from um, either kind of well established organizations that that went um, that were used our vetting process when we were um, reviewing different resources, or even some of our partner organizations as part of the Educating All Learners Alliance. Um, so it's good stuff that eventually makes it onto the website, and we and we think definitely important for folks in the field. Um, to have as you as you embark in a, a brave new school year this one probably will look even more different than the last two so um we did and we tried to keep that in mind as we as we highlighted these resources um so without further ado since we do want to keep a keep this under under 30 minutes um we're going to go ahead and get started so i'm going to talk through some of the the resources that we've included um for for this month and again these are our newer resources on the site but there is a ton of resources on the site so if um if you don't hear what you're looking for today please definitely peruse the educating all learners alliance um, website because there's lots there that we're not talking about today all right so the first thing that we have here is a podcast called full prefrontal so this is a podcast all about executive functioning which we know can be a struggle for 
um, many students, including those students with disabilities. And, and the, the reason we highlighted this out of all the executive um, functioning resources on the site is that it approaches the topic in a number of really interesting ways, mostly through um, interviews with experts from the field. Um, and it also approaches it sometimes from a family lens. So you may find that there are some resources in this podcast that you can even share with your families that might make life a little easier, not only in the classroom, but also also at home for your students. So um, we thought this was an, an interesting one and podcasts are just so accessible, I think in this day and age. So um, could be an, an easy and simple one um, for you to kind of listen to as you have a moment, but also to share with, with families. And we did include on this um, slide, a couple of the episodes in particular we thought might be of interest to our to our ELA audience. So definitely, definitely give it a look. Yes. And mm -hmm. for those who aren't familiar with podcasts, you can find those on a variety of platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, um, or certain apps on your phone, depending on if you have Android, iPhone, etc. There are specific podcast apps you can use. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. So this next one is a video and it's called Literacy for All, Equitable Practices for Reading and Dyslexia. So there's a ton of information about reading instruction in this video. Um, and so if, if you uh, teach reading or, or teach literacy in any way, um, the entire video might be of interest to you, but there are some really practical parts that start about 42 minutes into this, this talk. And, and I, I almost feel like this forum is the perfect time for us to highlight a resource like this that looks really dense at first, but but if you if you dig in has some stuff that's pretty easily um, uh, taken out and, and um, used in your classroom. Um, so uh, starting about 42 minutes into this video, um, the the um, speaker starts talking about reading intervention intensity and dosage. And I think that could be particularly helpful right now as schools um, are making schedules and looking at what their tier one and tier two interventions are going to be. And then also as individual teachers are making schedules, how am I going to provide um, this level of, of uh, intervention for these different students that may need them? This can give you, um, it gives a really nice, I think, scheduling examples that, that can be really helpful for you to react to and then adapt to your particular context. So um, the entire thing is, is really interesting, but certainly starting at 42 minutes is, I think, some really practical advice for, for educators. So moving along, um, this next one is um, tools and resources for addressing English learners with disabilities. And so this is actually part of a larger toolkit um, from the US Department of Education. But I really liked this tool because I think it offers some, some questions, some guiding questions for consideration when planning for a student who has um, potentially disabilities um, and also is learning English. Um, so could be just good conversation starters during professional development and like team time at the start of a school year. And for those of you who are in a position to do so, it also could be helpful to start Kind of codifying how your school approaches this topic into guides, manuals, some guidance um, for uh, IEP teams that they can use while they're having these important discussions in those IEP team meetings. So hopefully um, helpful in, for individuals who are going to be at those meetings, but also if you happen to be a, a leader, um, this could be helpful to um, start giving some guidance to teams on Certainly not a new issue, but one that seems to be um, rising, rising in um, importance and, and um, attention um, recently. So, so definitely wanted to make sure we addressed our, our English language learners with some of these resources. Moving along, this document, not only is it an interesting document in the way that it's laid out, it's really the first of its, its kind that I've ever seen. So worth looking at for that, that reason alone, in my opinion. But um, also it presents assistive technology, I think, in a really understandable um, way. And I really like the, the presentation here that kind of outlines common challenges that like a, a real student is experiencing in their school day, and then offers suggestions about how assistive technology in particular can help remove some of those barriers that the students um, are experiencing. So um, really, really practical, I think. And, and it's really just the beginning. I think assistive technology is going to be something that we talk about often in these, um, in these uh, trainings, in these in these monthly uh, sessions that we do, um, but this is like a nice kind of easy, easy entry into the world if you're not familiar with it or if you want to learn a little bit more. So that is assistive technology. Yeah. 
Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Next, we have IEP um, team leader training modules. So um, these are essentially online courses that look at various aspects of planning and running IEP meetings. And what I like about it is that it includes real voices from the field, parents, the folks who, that are um, actually case managers, teachers, um, uh, supervisors, uh, just all, all the people that matter when it comes to, to IEP meetings. And I think this could also be an excellent asynchronous resource um, that can be used for new staff throughout the year. Hopefully people come in September or August and they and that's who you have for the rest of the year. But the the you know realistic picture might be that you're getting new new staff um, coming on throughout the year, maybe even after all the front of the year training is done. So this can be a really nice resource to make sure that um, they're getting some support as in, in the for the important work of um, IEP team meetings throughout the year um, asynchronously that isn't requiring like a PD day or something of that of that nature. So definitely take a look at, at those uh, IEP team leader training modules. Next, we have a, a news story. So everything else that I've talked about thus far, you can find in the resource library on the ELO website, on the educatingalllearners.org website. This one would be on a separate tab. We have a news tab. You see it right at the top of your screen. And we do update it Monday through Friday. Um, and this news story was about um, a, uh, a program that's being uh, created for students with more complex learning, behavioral health needs who have traditionally been left out of higher education. Um, but I wanted to highlight it um, because um, while it's not a resource like all the others where it doesn't give tips, it doesn't you know, tell you how to do, it doesn't give you a tool for doing anything. We think that there's definitely a space for educators to be exposed to things like this, um, especially those who are part of IEP teams that are considering um, transition, the, the transition planning for students during those planning for post-secondary years. You might just want to know what's out there in terms of college and university programs for students that maybe typically wouldn't be considered um, in, the, in the college going crowd. Um, and so like, we, we, I kind of implore you to stay tuned to that news page if that's something that's of interest to you, because as I'm finding um, schools building these programming, I'm trying uh, to, to highlight them on the a news page as much as possible so that you have an idea of the options that are out there for students across the country. So this is just kind of one example of, of um, a news story that highlighted that information. Okay. And now, finally, and then we're going to switch to the kind of topic-based um, resources that Gabrielle had mentioned earlier. Um, we wanted to highlight our tech tool library. And I, and I think we're going to be doing a deeper dive on the actual tech tools that are in this library um, throughout this series, these, this monthly series that we're doing. But we wanted to start in August just by introducing you to our tech tools library. Um, and this is where you can get some information about the accessibility features of pretty common um, technology tools that are being used in, in classrooms. So how can we make that as accessible as possible for all of the learners in our, in our classrooms, be they virtual or in person? Um, anything more you wanna say about that, Gabrielle? Did I do a good job of summarizing it? No, I think that's great. Also, I wanted to jump on, um, I should have jumped in on the news page. Just also, we list um, articles about if ELO partner organizations are doing some great work related to student disabilities, those are some other articles that we'd like to share. Um, but no, I agree. We'll share a lot more about the Tech Tool Library, but that's been one of our most popular web pages since we launched it. Um, it's just a great, easy, one-stop shop to find all the accessibility information about your most used tools. So I think you said it all. Excellent. Okay, so now let's talk about some specific things for back to school. So we call this resources for restart. And this is again, very varied. We tried to cover as much of the spectrum of, of restart as we possibly could. So we started off with face coverings and different health protocols. And this resource specifically, um, it's called Helping People with Autism Spectrum Disorder Manage Masks and COVID-19 Tests. And um, certainly it does, it's from Harvard Medical School and certainly it does give some really practical tips about how to get um, students to comply with mask mandates, but it also is just helpful information for students even outside of those who have ASD. Um, it's got so, just some really 
uh, good tips, especially maybe if students haven't been wearing masks for the whole summer to just kind of reacclimate them to that life. Um, so that's just just something to consider. It, yes, it's it's uh, geared for a specific population, but the tips are kind of applicable across um, across the entire spectrum of not only disabilities but also students. So something to think about there. Moving along, we try to include something about transportation as well. We had the good fortune of getting to speak to teachers a little bit over the summer. Um, and, and this is one of the areas that we heard um, questions about, like what we want to be able to help our transportation folks as much as we possibly can, especially as we start a new school year. Like what resources can we pass along to them or how can we better plan for students to have good interactions on, you know, the school bus or the van or however it is that they they get to school. Um, so we wanted to make sure we included that in these resources for restart and because we're I think we're in total agreement the beginning of the school year is a really good opportunity to set students up for success including that positive climate right as soon as they you know start their journey to school or, or, or their journey back home um, and so um, this is a, uh, a resource um, called Rethinking School Transportation for our Autistic Students. And I would say again, yes, it's very applicable information for that population, but it's also um, applicable kind of for, for any student um, that is um, going to be on transportation for the new school year and how you can kind of get that started off on the right foot. So definitely take a look um, for those of you who are adding transportation to IEPs. Um, or including including uh, uh, transportation is just a part of their their school day. This, there's some really practical tips here. Next, we have a resource that's looking specifically at remote instruction. So it's going to be a weird year. I think I know schools are in different places as it pertains to remote instruction. And so this specifically is a script um, for communicating with families. But the thing that I like about this, and there's actually a couple of them on the Educating All Learners website, a couple of different um, scripts that just give some, some questions that you should kind of be asking to monitor how the student and their family is doing. Um, since you don't, with students who are who are on remote instruction, maybe don't have that that face-to-face -face that you can kind of rely on as much. Um, but I like this one because it also includes some follow-up activities. So yes, you heard that on a call. It's so easy. I know personally, I, I'm a former educator myself. Um, it's so easy to like make the call you jot maybe the notes down and then you got to just wait till the next instance when it's on your calendar to to follow up um with the, the family again but this does give some really nice um uh, pointers on what you can do with the information that you gleaned from the, the the communication with families um even up to and including like passing that on to someone else who maybe can help them more immediately so i think um a, a very robust resource for that reason so that's remote instruction, but we didn't want to leave out those of you who are going to be returning to fully in-person instruction. And so um, we included this resource on the power of the student-teacher connection. Um, I think we we heard uh, over the course of the last year that this is like just such a powerful um, engagement tool, uh, attendance tool, kind of you name it, if there's a connection to the, the um, school community for a student, they're just so much more likely to to be thriving in that environment. And so we liked this one in particular. This, I should say, is a um, webinar recording that we hosted, that the Educating All Learners Alliance hosted. Um, so yes, it make, it states that case, but I also think it gives some really specific strategies and links to resources that you can kind of set up for a as best a start as possible for the start of this next school year. So helpful um, for the resources, I think, that it that it adds, not just making the case for how important it is. This next one is another one that we heard when we got to speak to educators in the field. <clears throat> We're really looking for something to help the paraprofessionals that are working in our schools, and we, we heard you. Um, this is kind of an introductory um, uh, kind of catch-all for the work that paraprofessionals do, but it's called Building the Toolkit for Paraprofessional Success. Um, and we, we think that this is um, something great for educators to share with their paraprofessionals at the beginning of the school year, get that conversation started about expectations um, and growth opportunities for, for the paraprofessional in the classroom. And then of course, if you're a paraprofessional, take a look at some of the advice um, that it that it gives in order to to really um, kind of own all the the aspects of the work, especially if you're you're new to the to the um, to the job. We would be remiss if we didn't include something about accessibility. So, like it says, now's the time to think about how to make materials accessible to your students and 
um, we liked this resource um, because it looks at both online and in-person accessibility um, considerations. So it doesn't, it's kind of agnostic, or I guess I should say all encompassing, no matter what the environment is going to look like for you this year. And that maybe could change as the year rolls along. Um, it gives it gives some good guidance uh, regardless of of which way you're your um, instruction is going to look on any particular day. So it's um, one of the one of the more comprehensive of the resources um, concerning accessibility on the website. And we'll also soon be releasing other materials related to what Lauren alluded to, the aspect that schools, you know, learning environments might be further changing as the year goes on. So we're also going to be releasing um, a similar webinar recording in the next few days as well. All right, rounding it out, we have a couple more resources. This first is resources around attendance. So we, we definitely heard that attendance and virtual learning was really tricky for a lot of schools over the last year plus. Um, I like this resource because it does provide some like classroom educator based tips for kind of uh, trying to, to improve attendance during, during virtual learning, but I also, um, looks at the issue from the systemic lens, like what systemically can schools be doing differently to kind of uh, encourage attendance. Um, so I think it it understands the how difficult <laughs> this um, this this uh, issue is um, and that it, you know one person alone can't necessarily change um, uh, an attendance pattern for a particular student, but it, I think it looks at it from from multiple different different lenses and, and um, is, is fairly nuanced in that regard. And then finally, we have um, uh, an item around scheduling. And so this one, um, while for every educator, they may not be responsible for scheduling in, in their, for, you know, for, for every student in their school. We like this one because it talked um, about how you can use your time if you are, um, if you have the opportunity or you're forced to be in a hybrid schedule, um, what are some ways that you can be flexible about the way you present instruction um, and schedule instruction um, that's uh, conducive to the different learning environments um, that students are, are going to be in likely or, or, or maybe just depending on your on your uh, school schedule um, as this year rolls around. So scheduling kind of from a very what's within educators control lens. So that's everything that we wanted to make sure we covered um, on uh, back to school, those kind of resources for restart, though we're, we're happy to hear any feedback about any areas that we were missing, because if even if it's missing from this presentation, it's probably on the website. Um, and then we just wanted to do just a quick preview of um, different topics uh, that we're, we're planning for um, the rest of, of this series. So um, student engagement seemed like a big um, search topic that we were seeing on this on the uh, ELO website um, like this time last year. So we want to kind of get in front of that and uh, um, give you some resources for um, not only uh, in person, but also virtual student engagement. And then we're going to in October um, foray that into family engagement. Um, how can you not only build relationships with families, but also utilize them, actually kind of work them uh, in a way that's beneficial to, to you and the student and the family. Um, then we're going to talk about UDL, Universal Design for Learning, um, give you some time to get your feet under you in your new school year, and then, and then um, make sure we're giving you as many tools as possible to, to um, integrate UDL uh, into, your, into your lesson plans, uh, should that be something you elect to do, which we hope you do. Um, I mentioned we're going to talk about assistive technology, I think probably very often in these, in these series, but we want to put a, um, a, a finer point on it in December. Um, so we'll highlight some resources that um, look at assistive technology and hopefully give you an idea of like what's out there. I think sometimes that's the hardest part is like, you know, you know that there's probably a tool that can help, but what and where do I go to find more out? So we want to make sure we can we can connect you with some of those resources. And then um, in January, looking at transition planning. So I mentioned we try and highlight some transition stuff in the news stories as we as we see them. Um, but there's also really tons of resources on the website about transition, post-secondary transition, um, planning for college, planning for the workforce on the on the um, ELA website. So we want to highlight some of those in January. Um, yes.
And we always like to listen to the field. So of course we have all these subjects that we think will be super helpful, we hope will be, but if there's a particular topic you think that we should discuss in a future month, feel free to let us know. You can um, message us on social media. Um, our social media is educate all underscore org. Um, on Twitter, you can message us on Facebook, at educating all learners. Um, and let us know, or you can email us. Our email is resources at educatingalllearners.org and let us know what you think we should discuss. Um, and similarly, if you have a resource that you think is one of the best resources for teachers or educators of students with disabilities, we would be glad to take it through our vetting process uh, and consider it for our resource library. So you can send it to any of those places that I mentioned as well. Um, but we are really excited. And so I wanted to thank everyone for joining. Thanks to Lauren for sharing all these. Uh, I also wanted to remind everyone about the ISTU Summer Academy that we're offering uh, as a free scholarship. And so if you go to ISTU's website, you can use the code S-L-A-E-A-L-A. -E -A -L -A. That's in all capital letters with no spaces. And you use that code to get a free scholarship. Um, so you can use it yourself or share it with others. And again, those are self-paced courses that you can do to prepare for the school year. So thank you all so much. Um, we hope to see you in our future months and have a great rest of your day. <laughs>